this is Neeraj Kumar and in today's video blog I'm going to talk about Azure Disk Encryption and how to enable AD on a Windows VM uh, running in Azure. So essentially what is AD? So Microsoft gives you an ability to encrypt your boot volume and data volume. On Windows VM you will uh, make use of BitLocker which is the underlying technology and on Linux VM, you're going to make use of DMCrypt technology, which is you know, provided by Linux. Now, in order to make this work, uh, you have BitLocker keys and DMCrypt passphrase that has to be securely stored uh, in, a, in a key management system. And Azure Key Vault is, is, comes in handy to help you and store the keys in Key Vault. So some of the basic requirement for ADE uh, is that you know you need to have a VM which is in a standard tier it doesn't work with basic tier VM of course you will need an Azure key vault to store the BitLocker keys uh, another thing to keep in mind is that when you want to enable the data volume ADE uh, you cannot uh, do it without enabling that on the boot volume so make sure that your boot volume ADE is also included uh, in, during the encryption process. Some of the supported Azure Disk encryption you have on Windows 2008 R2 to 2016. You can also enable that on Windows 8 and Windows 10 client. On the Linux side, you have Red Hat, uh, Linux, CentOS, OpenSUSE, and different flavors which you can refer on Microsoft website. Another thing to keep in mind is that your storage account uh, and the uh, VHD that you were going to put in the storage account and the compute, the VM, uh, must be created in the same resource group. Otherwise, this uh, encryption is going to fail. Uh, there are various ways you can enable the Azure Disk encryption. One is using through ARM portal. Uh, you know, you can go to the Azure portal and from there you can deploy a ARM template to enable the disk encryption. You can also enable it through PowerShell. So today we will uh, see things in action through using ARM template that Microsoft has deployed at GitHub. And we will also see, once we have enabled, you will see how to disable the Azure disk encryption. In subsequent session, I will cover uh, how to enable ADE using PowerShell. So here are some of the steps which are required to enable Azure Disk Encryption using ARM template. Uh, so first thing first is you will require a VM uh, which is provisioned for the data disk uh, because you know you want to enable the boot volume and data volume encryption both. Subsequently, you will have to register an application, a dummy application in Azure AD which will be utilized to store uh, the secret and retrieve the BitLocker secret from the Azure Key Vault. Uh, when you register this, you will get user-friendly name of your application, uh, sign on URL and app ID URI. Uh, you will also you know, make note of client ID and application key, which we will require at the time of uh, enabling Azure Disk Encryption. You will also create Azure Key Vault, uh, where we will store BitLocker keys. Uh, next, you know, after the Azure Key Vault is created, uh, we'll have to set permissions which will allow the Azure VM to make use of Azure Key Vault to store and retrieve BitLocker key at the time runtime. So you'll have to enable AKB to accept uh, disk encryption requests. You'll also have to set uh, different permissions on the Azure Key Vault. You will grant that permission to the uh, application uh, ID or you know that you have created in step number two. Finally, we will see uh, we will use the ARM template, which is you know from the GitHub. Uh, we'll deploy and we will fill out all those uh, details which is needed uh, in case of uh, enabling encryption, Azure Disk encryption on a Windows VM. So this is how you know our setup is going to look like. Uh, we will have one Azure VM created in Azure. Uh, we will also have a storage account. That storage account will consist of two disks. One is a VHD operating system desk and a VHD data desk. Uh, we'll also create one Azure Key Vault uh, and um, assign the permission for this VM. Uh, we'll also register an application account in Azure AD and use that user ID and principal 
to grant the permission over here in Azure Key Vault. So we will see all this thing in action today. Uh, next, uh, we are going to log into Azure Portal and perform the task that I have outlined earlier. So I'm logged on to Azure Classic Portal. Remember, in order to register your application, dummy application, you have to register in Azure Classic Portal. So once you log in, you will come down and basically you will click on your Azure Active Directory option that you will see. So basically, you know, you will come here over in Active Directory. Uh, after that, you will select the Active Directory that you have. Uh, so in my case is uh, my EC form and I will come over in the application so which I need to go ahead and register myself so uh, essentially what I will do is I will go ahead and say add which will let me uh, add an application a dummy application so in this case I'm going to go ahead and select add an application to my organization is developing because it's a dummy application and I will give it name, oh, wow, Azure AD Demo. Uh, here you the option that you see, you will, uh, you're not going to select native client application, but rather you'll select web application and a web API. So please keep this, leave this selected. Uh, next here, you have to specify a sign on URL. It has to be in HTTP format. So you can say, wow, Azure AD Demo dot Azure. You can put any uh, URL, you know, it's not getting verified. Uh, it's just a demo thing that we will utilize for our, uh, you know, when we set up the permissions, that's when we will utilize the this application uh, uh, account that we are creating currently. So I say, go ahead and say create. So essentially what is gonna do is it will go ahead and provision uh, one. You can see that you know, it has provision now after that, uh, you will have you will require application key. So you will come over here in configure, and then if you scroll down here, uh, you will see an option to create a key. So once you create a key, so you'll have to select you know, for how long that you need. So I'm going to select one year. After that, you know, I create the key, uh, and if I, if I click on save, it's going to generate the key, and then it will show me the key. So it says, right, the key will be displayed after you save it. So I'm going to pause the video here and, you know, generate the key, and uh, I will use this key for uh, next steps. Now, next thing that, that I need to do is I have to create Azure Key Vault, so you will come uh, into your security and identity. And then you will see that I have a key vault option. Remember, the Azure key vault has to be in the same region as your uh, VM as, and also, uh, you know, so in my case, it's South Central US. I'll keep that, and I'm going to create one. I'll give the name of Azure uh, AKV. I have my subscription, so this is going to be the subscription. Uh, for resource group, I will utilize the existing resource group where I have the VM uh, location is going to be the same. Uh, you can look at the, uh, you know, the pricing tier that you have. Uh, so basically, you know, you have uh, HSM backed, uh, which is a premium, which is a hardware security module, and then you have software based, which is standard. So I will just select the standard. I'm really not concerned about HSM at this point of time. Uh, in, in terms of the access policies, you will see, we'll, we'll come back to it later and set it up, but uh, I just want to show you that from here you will set the access policy which is required for Azure Key Vault. I will say go ahead and create one, so this will start the provisioning. So you can see that, you know, deployment has started. Uh, I will pause the video and come back to you when it is done. So I see that uh, uh, the provisioning is successful. So we will move on to the next step. So essentially now in you know, my Azure Key Vault has been created. Uh, so I will go ahead and start the permission. We have to set the permissions. If you come here under the advanced access policies, you will see that you know we have to enable the setting called uh, enable access to Azure Disk Encryption for volume encryption. If it is not turned on, you won't be able to uh, use the Azure Key Vault for storing BitLocker keys. 
Uh, next, uh, we'll go in access policies and here we'll go ahead and add a application that we have created. So remember, we created Azure ED disk demo. So we will see that account over here. If you come here, so let's see Azure disk demo. Sorry, Azure ADE demo. So you will see that I have this while Azure ADE demo, I say select. And after that, I will have to give permissions, which is required. So under the key permissions, I have to give under cryptographic operation, I have to give wrap keys permission. Then under the secret permission, I'll have to give set permission to this uh, dummy application account that we have registered in Azure AD. And after that, we should go ahead and say, okay, so this validation will process. And then, you know, this has added this account with the appropriate permission, uh, which will be utilized during the Azure disk encryption process. Finally, you will come over here and uh, look at this, you know, this article which Microsoft has published, which has listed the link to the GitHub, uh, you know, which you will deploy. So our scenarios enable encryption on an existing uh, running IES Windows VM. And here, if we come over here, you will see that we have a resource manager template. So I'm going to open it in another tab. So essentially what it does is it takes you to the GitHub where you have this template uh, published. And now if you come down, you have option of deploying to Azure, Azure Gov, you know, depending on what, where you want. So in our case, it will deploy to Azure. So I'll go ahead and click on it. So essentially it will take me back to the portal and it will ask me to fill out uh, all the details which are needed to deploy this template. So you will shortly see that it is asking me a set of uh, parameters to be put in like resource group, location, VM name, uh, Azure AD client ID that you will get, you know, when we register the application, the secret and the key vault name. Uh, you will also have to specify the key vault resource group. Uh, this is something uh, Azure use key encryption key. If we are going to use that today, we will not talk about the KE key. Uh, finally, you will also, uh, you know, what kind of volume you want to encrypt. Do you want to encrypt all volume or data or boot? So we will leave it to all. I will come back to, you know, I will pause the video. I'll come back to you when I have filled out all those details. So now I have, if you can look at it, I have filled out all the details, my resource group name, the VM name, the my client ID, the application that I have registered in Azure AD and also the secret, uh, the key vault name uh, that we are gonna make use of. Uh, also, you know, the key vault resource group. So it's actually app one. Uh, as I said, I'm not gonna talk about KE key today. Uh, volume type, I have left uh, both the, you know, all. So it means in you know, a boot volume as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, the data volume. So before I go ahead and deploy this template, I want to show you that in the existing uh, disk status that it is not encrypted. So I'm looking at the disk status of uh, the VM that I have provisioned. And if you look at you know, the disk, you can see that the encryption status is not enabled on the OS disk as well as on the data disk. And you will see after I deploy the template, the status is gonna change from encryption from not enabled to enabled. I'm back to the de uh, template deployment page and I say I agree and I say go ahead and click on purchase. So what this will do in the background, it will go and start the encryption process. So I will come back to it, you know, once the encryption has taken place. So I'm back to the my Azure portal console. Now you can see that the encryption status is enabled. The template deployment is complete. Uh, now, next, what we are going to do is we will go ahead and disable the encryption and I will show you, you know, once we are disabled, uh, you will see the encryption status as uh, not enabled. 
so in order to enable uh, disable the encryption uh, you will have to fire up uh, windows azure powershell and you have to log into your azure account so i select the azure rm account it will ask me for my username and password i will pause the video i will log in and then come back so essentially i now, now logged in you can see that my login is successful since i have multiple subscriptions so i will go ahead and select the one that which uh, where i have the vm stored so there is a problem it was my bad i had to run different comma so i i say select azure rm subscription subscription name needed mct msdn so i'll go ahead and select it so this will select that subscription after i have selected the subscription i will have to run disable our azure rm vm disk encryption command uh, which will essentially go ahead and disable the disk encryption on the desk so you specify your command then you specify the resource group name where you have the vm and then you specify your vm name which is my azure dc1 in this case so i will go ahead and run it and uh, we'll see that you know this will initiate the disk decryption process and it will disable the azure disk encryption on the vm on the both the volumes you can see that i have started uh, uh, the moment i ran it it asking me this command will disable encryption on the vm and it may reboot the vm so make sure that you are not doing an on production vms so once i click on yes it will go ahead and start the decryption process so i say yes uh, it's going to take some time so i will come back to once it is done you can see the status it has completed the status and you know that decryption is completed so if i come back to the <coughs> my azure portal you will see that you know the disk encryption is just is disabled that is you know, not enabled you can also verify the encryption status using powershell command get as azure vm and uh, you know you specify the source group name and the dc name uh, or your sorry rather your server name in this case it happened to be domain controller for me and uh, once you go ahead and run it basically you will see that uh, the disk encryption status over here enabled is set to false so this has this has disabled encryption thank you for watching my video i hope you find it useful uh, stay tuned for my next video in which uh, I'm going to talk about how to enable Azure Disk Encryption using PowerShell.